uh, Dr. Jun Yang. She is uh, from MIT and she is And I don't even know what your specialty is. Um, Nobody told me. Yeah, I'm working on parasites and mutual cells. That's so good. All right, good. All right, and so she's going to do a little review of the oscillations and we have them done on oscillations. Good. And we just got the brief on Friday. Um, and yes, that was one, two, and three. It's not five. On Friday, Friday and Saturday. And then she's going to continue a little bit and start into chapter six. So since I heard that you all will have the exam this Friday and Saturday, so I thought to give you some little review so you can understand this better better. Um, so first I will spend the first 20 or 25 minutes to talk about uh, the damped and the driving oscillation. Then we will start the new chapter about the calculus or variations. Uh, so first, I would like to uh, introduce a little bit more about my teaching philosophy. So first, uh, I would like everyone to think about like why, if we, everyone we can like uh, learn by myself from a textbook, then why do we still come here together to study, to learn from a lecture? So uh, because here is a Chinese proverb. So it says uh, if there are more than two person, uh, at least one person, we can learn from each other. And uh, we can, um, so that's why we are sitting here together and we can exchange the ideas. We can even discuss some homework and point out each other's blind point. So that's why um, we are here to study more efficiently. And uh, I also, so here we are, uh, we are first, I spend the first part of the lecture to review the previous ch chapter, uh, because uh, say this depends on this uh, uh, Chinese wisdom, it says about if we always review what we learned, we can always find something new, we can even teach someone else. So besides this, I also would like to show how if I teach this class, I would like to assess the behavior. So I put the final exam only 30% because I feel everyone should not just put all your efforts in the last day. They should like evenly put your efforts from the beginning. So at the end, you will feel uh, it's really easy. So the last day is a, a little bit of a fun exercise. It's just like some small project so you can use what you learned from the classroom, beyond the classroom to do some practical application. So it's just fun exercise. And also, I hope that the first part about the review chapter, you don't need to write, but for the new chapter, uh, I wish we could uh, like writing a lecture from the PT as well as uh, I'm writing on the whiteboard. Because uh, as this book said, the way we are writing to learn and why it matters. Uh, first of all, I will start from the uh, damped oscillation and introduce a few practical applications and then we, about the driving oscillation and the drivers. Also, I want to ask in the back, can you hear me? Should I take the mask off? Can you hear me in the back? I think it's fairly safe. Okay. Okay, okay, so maybe you can hear more clearly. Um, then we will go back to the simple focus law and the harmonic motion. So as you already learned, so the a damped oscillation is, uh, say the system, the amplitude is uh, decreasing as a function of time and uh, decreasing as a exponential of decay. So, and the time tau, here is the time before the constant tau, the system to be one over V of the original amplitude. And theoretically, 
the oscillation uh, never says you can say always or infinite, infinitely. However, the amplitude will become undetectably small. So for practical purpose, the time constant is a lifetime of oscillation uh, to measure how long it will take to decay. If the time constant is very large, the oscillation system will persist over many periods and the amplitude decrease will be very small. So if the time constant is very small, the oscillation will damp very quickly. So here is an example uh, on the right upper corner is the Shanghai Tower. So they put a dab inside of a building to stabilize the uh, building. So there is a small quiz. So we have a spur system on the horizontal plane. Uh, its maximum displacement from the screening burn pressure will gradually decrease with time because of our friction. So what happens to the mechanical energy of the system during this time? Sure. Yes, exactly. So, um, yeah, so the mechanical energy will decrease and because uh, you, it will dissipate as a thermal energy. So if there's a low damping, the mechanical energy of the system will be one half Ka square. So with the friction, the constant amplitude will be replaced by the function as a exponential of decay. So here is a very simple example. I think it's a solution. So I'm not sure if you can see. So later, uh, the system uh, of the theoretical it will be consistent, but the mechanical energy will transfer to the thermal energy. So it will also do become zero. And here, so yeah, as you learned, the natural frequency of an oscillator is a uh, frequency of the system if it is displaced from equilibrium and the release. The driver frequency is a motion of an oscillator that is subject to a periodic external force to the system. And the other lines, well, the driver frequency equals to the lateral frequency, so its amplitude can be maximal. So for example, if we have a ball on string or driving oscillator, so on the cartoon, you can say the left, the damping reduces the amplitude of the motion. If you add external force, it can offset the damping. So when you drive a pendulum and the frequency F1, then you observe an amplitude about one centimeter. If you increase the frequency gradually to F2, and the amplitude also increases to two centimeter. What is the natural frequency of the system? Um, That's correct, right. Um, and the amplitude will get to increase and it didn't increase and decrease. So it's not the human one that's doing it. It's not how the number. Excellent, thank you. Thank you for your answer. Exactly, so when uh, the amplitude is still increasing as we add the external force, which means this system hasn't reached its uh, maximum. Um, so the, we can still add external frequency until it reaches our natural frequency. So this figure is also shows on the bottom if the time constant is small, it damps quickly. Also, another fun fact. So why can you hear the bass loads from your labors when it is more distinctive than higher pitched loads? So 
any longer with me. Yes, right. Um, excellent. So, so since the sound is vibrating uh, of the air molecular, so the bass loads has a lower frequency, which means a higher, higher wavelength. So it compared uh, the longer wavelengths, uh, the schedule is comparable to the size of the ceilings and walls. So we can hear it more clearly than the higher pitched loads. And here uh, we have uh, two examples. So first, uh, since as we mentioned earlier, the sound is a vibrate of the air molecular, but we cannot say it very clearly. So here's a, a extreme example about the gas under influence of a speaker and uh, 748 hertz. Maybe I should turn this on. And the next example is about the London Bridge. So the part of the problem was fixed by they put the uh, damper in the system to control the horizontal movement as well as the vertical movement. So. And we will now uh, get, give a quick review about the focus law. So this is a spurn system. We have get a external force. So, um, if we put, so the F equals minus KX, K is a spurn constant. So if we give our external force, force as twice as much uh, of the original force, the spurn will be extracted, uh, stretched to twice long as the original length. So here, so F equals MIA, the mass times the, we lost uh, the uh, acceleration. So minus kx equals v uh, times v dv dx. So we integrate both sides. And this gives you the energy, uh, total energy e minus half kx x square equals half m. So half m v square kinetical energy. So since uh, any function can be expanded in our Taylor series, so we can safely write in this formula as long well as the x is very small. So the first three terms uh, should be a good approximation. So this is uh, uh, an arch and a is a maximal amplitude. So we have a stable minimal and the unstable maximum. This is a simple harmonic motion. 
So on our right, uh, you can say if you know, if you study astrophysics, uh, battery system, they orbit around each other. And this is a simple harmonic motion, uh, x double dot equals minus omega x squared. So you have two trial solution, you can get x. So you Then you can put this C1 plus C2 equals B1 and uh, uh, write it in this formula as a phase shift uh, cosine function. So the A is the amplitude of the motion and the uh, third part is a uh, phase constant. So here I wanna ask, so if we dig a hole here, then we go to our side of our side China or for example, we build a gravity train or we throw the ball into the hole, what will happen? Imagine. Oh, wow, you are looking everything. Okay, that's too. Oh, yes. Good to fresh it. <laughs> yeah, your center is the same. It will be the same oscillate, yeah. It's the same. Because you feel good to the center, the force goes the 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 central force you can put x by two components. So that's yeah. just one component. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I don't believe it much But it works out really. So now we do the damping and some application. As well as as well as the oscillations and the wireless, include the way do the basic uh, Hooke's law and the simple harmonic motion. So now we are going to get to an exciting new chapter, something new. Um, so we will talk about the calculus, calculus of variations. Uh, first, I will give you two examples. Then we will get to your regular Lagrange equation. Um, then I will talk about the application of the application about this already like Lagrangian equation. By the way, we will only uh, talk a little bit about the branches of Hong Kong. So next, uh, the, the next time, maybe Dr. Stone will tell you how to do algorithms. So this one, I think the shortest pass of the uh, computer. Get back here, uh, about two examples. Well, you really have challenges to <laughs> Yeah, the best I ever saw. So first we have to see our motivation. Why do we learn the Euler Lagrange equation? Uh, so this uh, equation is, uh, uh, is used in physics to find the stationary points of our action. So this generates the equation of motions for your system. Uh, even you have a very complicated system with this uh, uh, equation, you can find uh, a uh, very easy solution, so make the problem solvable as long as use the right approximation. So later I will also show you example about this. Here first, uh, the the shortest, we will start with the first example. Uh, I think at the same time, I will also write it down so that you all will be able to catch up your case. Calculus of variations. So first we will start with two example. Then the first example is about the 
shortest path between two points. So if you look under this uh, uh, curve, so this is a X, X, Y plane, and uh, we start from X1 and Y1, we go to X2, Y2. So we choose a path, uh, Y equals YX as a arbitrary path. Y equals YX. This is an arbitrary path. And the reason here, like each segment from here with ds equals square root of dx plus dx square plus dy square. So we integrate from one to two. So error from action from s one to two. Es x one two point x two so if we write d one equals d y equals d y over d x d x so this can be read as the y prime d x so here you put d y into here, so we get one plus y pi x squared dx. So the total length will be can be read in this formula. One plus y pi x squared. So we will. I use this formula later after we learned the all your Lagrange equation. We will come back here later. So now we are get to the second example about format principle. So uh, this uh, this example is is to find the minimal total travel time when the lights. Light goes through the material, the wall, or the interstellar medium. So the total travel time. How equals from one to two point two dt. So this equals from one to two. So dt equals ds over v. So just let me know if you want to slow down when you write the notes from the PPT. Um, so velocity is equals light of speed over n. So n is a refractive index. So you put the v into this similar, so one over c from one to two n. Since in the interstellar medium, when your light travels, so it's not homogeneous, or you travel light from through the wall or any material, so it's not homogeneous. So the n, the refractive index, depends on where you, which location you are. So n is a function of. Uh, Yeah, exactly. Always make sure like left side, right side, the units are consistent. Yeah, thank you for finding out that. Uh, so here, so we, so N, so it depends on where you are. So it's sort of homogeneous. 
So N X Y D T D S. So here I I ignore the one step. So here is N D S. So here's D S. So D S as we derived from the first example from here. So from the first example, D S will be equals one plus y pro i x square dx. This form as possible can say the correct uh, path between point one to point two, uh, with, with which path, so the time will be a minimum. So here the ds, So we need to find out which the integral is a minimal or maximum. So if we make ds over dr phi equals zero, though, but it, uh, actually it's not enough to make sure the point is, uh, is uh, the minimum. So here, the first derivative df over dx, so this is a minimal, but here df over dx equals zero, though, it's a maximal. But here it can be either, it's, it's neither maximal or minimal. So we uh, we also so the first term is a uh, second derivative is positive the next one is uh, negative and this one the second derivative is zero and now we get to the third part the second part the second part the Euler Lagrange equation. So if you assume that uh, y x is a curve that uh, minimizes the path of action s, s is called a functional. So functional is different with function. Functional means the inputs are function as function y, y prime, but the output is a number. So first we construct the variation. Y X equals capital Y X equals little Y X plus alpha it X. So alpha is a, a parameter, arbitrary parameter number. And eta is a arbitrary good function. I wait a couple of seconds before I switch to PPT. So the original plan is to put a PPT and the same time to write on the whiteboard. <laughs> I didn't realize the whiteboard is an awesome. Maybe after you're done, I'm going to. Either, either, yeah. So here. Yeah, so here you have uh, like a right path, y, x. So here you have a wrong x, so there's the eta x, but the eta x can, so this little y plus extra, extra wrong path, so it can be any path. So here which y, we, y, x, because little y, x plus alpha eta x, because this is a wrong path, it can be any path. And the y, uh, so the eta, it, and x1 and the end 
end of the curve, the true path and the y path, the y value are the same. So eta x1 and eta x2 is equal to zero. So here. So the s alpha we integrate from uh, two, uh, point 0.2 to point, point 0.1 to point 0.2. So we can write the f as a function of y, y prime x. So we put the capital Y here, equal to Y X plus alpha eta and the Y pi, capital Y pi, the Y pi plus alpha E pi. So in order to make sure everyone keep up with the pace, I'm also going to write this down. <laughs> Why? Yeah. So if you write, we, we can memorize better, write uh, one more time. F Y plus alpha eta and Y pi plus alpha e pi x dx. So this we can write as s as a function of alpha. So now s, it is a real function of alpha. Since as we mentioned the in the PPT was the little y when alpha equals zero. So when this term equals zero, so capital Y equals little y. So also and alpha equals zero, S has minimum. Uh, to ensure this later, we must uh, need to check that DS over D alpha equals zero when alpha equals zero. So uh, let's start from your S alpha. We, we will need to derive this to the Euler Lagrange equation. But first, we need to recall the Leibniz rule. So, So D, D alpha from A alpha to D alpha F X alpha D X. So how many please do I remember? So first we do the derivative to the upper limit. D, D alpha, D alpha, F, B R, then we put the plug B alpha into the function F, B R, F alpha, alpha minus D, then we put the upper limit, uh, the lower limit of the integration, D A alpha. D A alpha, D alpha, then, from, then we put A alpha, plug A alpha, the lower limit to X, so this plus A alpha to B alpha. So hash F, X alpha, hash alpha, DX. So with this one, we start From the S alpha, we are gonna do D S D S alpha D alpha over D D alpha. So since we are trying to find the minimum, 
So here is a S. We need to make sure the S, the alpha equals zero. So we have to do a derivative for this whole integral form. D, D alpha from X1 to point X2. F Y, Y prime X, D X. So this equals from X1 to X2 partial f y y pi x partial alpha dx. So since the first two term in the lattice work, the first two terms it called zero zero. As it does as the first it does not depend on the alpha. So the first two term here it doesn't depend on uh, alpha. So this equals, now we need to look and only look, we need to look at this term. So we do hash f, partial alpha y y pi x. So this equals, we use a chain rule, partial f, partial y pi, and partial y pi, partial alpha, plus partial f, partial y, partial y, partial alpha. Any question about this part? Are we all on the same page? Do I need to check stop a few seconds? So here, if you look and just this term, partial y, partial alpha, So partial y prime partial alpha equals eta prime x. So if you remember the formula before here, partial y prime partial alpha is equals eta prime. And similarly, we can also write this term. Partial y, partial alpha equals eta x. So now we can plug this term into this equation above. So this equals eta pi partial f, partial y pi plus eta partial f, partial y. So now here for partial f, partial y prime. So partial f, partial y prime equals partial f, partial little y prime times partial y prime, partial capital y prime. So this term equals one. So this equals partial f partial y prime. And similarly for this the second term, this term. So we can have partial f partial capital y equals partial f partial little y partial y, partial capital Y. So this term also equals one. So we have partial F, partial Y. So now for this term, we got 
eta prime. So we put the eta prime partial f partial y prime plus eta partial f partial y. Any question about this part? So we just do the same thing That's from what she said earlier about the red drop thing. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so this is this is the this is the the oral um that simple statement there is the important. So instead of doing all of that, that's the result. Yeah, here actually we only use the yeah, that's right. We only use the Leibniz rule and the chain rule to, to go get to the next step. So now we, here we still come back to ds over d alpha. So here we go to next step to collect so ds d alpha still from x1 to x2. So we can put what we simplify into this formula. This it times e hash f hash y plus e pi hash f hash y pi dx. So that's why that's what we are doing. First, we just did the first step. So put this formula because you can simply say uh, the f. If you do a partial alpha, actually only y and uh, eta and eta prime as a function of alpha, so you can simplify into these two steps. Uh, these uh, two terms, that's what we, we just derived. So we get to here, then you put this y into formula, so we do this step. So this will be equals eta. So now we only look at the one term, the second term. So eta pi plus s plus eta pi. So here for this term, we from x1 to x2, eta pi partial f hash y pi dx equals eta partial f y pi from x1 to x2 minus x1 to x2 eta d dx partial f partial y pi dx. So since it, as we mentioned earlier, and the two end point, eta x1 equals it. equals eta x2 equals zero. So this term equals x1 to x2 eta d dx partial f partial y by dx. Yeah, so here we just look at the, this one simple term and uh, this. So this term and two endpoint and x1 and x2, eta x1 equals zero and eta x2 equals zero. So this term equals zero. So we simplify this, then we plug this, this term into the above.
so now we have so now we get back to yes over the alpha yes over the alpha equals from x1 to x2 so we plug this formula to the ps over the alpha as we should do Eta. If y minus eta d eta d dx partial f partial y pi dx. So this equals eta partial f partial y minus d dx partial f partial y pi dx equals zero so as we mentioned ds over d r ds over d alpha has to be equal zero so Uh, yeah, it's arbitrary. You can have this one next to it. So, yes. Yeah, that's why we put here. So, now we get this term equals zero. And here, as we mentioned under the ex, uh, the eta x is arbitrary. So since eta is arbitrary, then so it means what? It means, so this, this problem is this is arbitrary, which is this because this can be innocent. Let me show the similarity. So this term has to be zero. Then partial f, partial y minus d dx, partial f, partial y prime equals zero. So now we get y x is a function. So this is the Euler Lagrange equation. From this equation, we can get the full function fx. So, we can stop a little bit in case you have any question. So this uh, final order of one equation. Yeah, so from here we can get the uh, y. Why? Because the y x, if I get a true pass. So, um, okay, I'm gonna show you, get back to our first, the first example is also our first application of this Euler Lagrange equation. I believe next time you will have more examples. Yes. I will show you the first one. So, we can use to get a true pass y equals y x, we can find the shortest pass. So that's what we showed the first example, error equals from 0.2 to 0.1 to 0.2. And uh, we will get to back to the loads. So I also wanna keep writing so that everyone be on the same pace. So I will know which 
about your piece, I will also keep writing. So now we talk about two examples and then second oil like ground equation. Now we get to a sec third part, and also the last part. So it's called very and Oh, sorry, I'm simply fine. So, so we have time to have two parts. Why x is a function? It's a function. So, <laughs> the simplified the word. So, third. So, I'm writing a third part. So, uh, yeah. Thank you for asking. I always ask questions. So, the third part variant calculus allow us allows us to find a particular path y x such that is y x from the action the path from point x1 to x2 f y y pi x dx this functional uh, is stationary so we go back to the euler large one equation so i will still write it again Partial f partial y minus d dx partial f partial y prime equals zero. This is a Euler Lagrange equation. So we our goal is to find the shortest path between two points in your plane. Shortest path. Between two points in a plane. So from this xy plane, so we've from this pass from x1, x2. I believe you said this before, just the way now we should write, write it down again y2 so we start from an beginning the action from 1 to 2 ds from x point x1 to x2 so i think we are derived earlier and the first example so this equals 1 plus y y x squared dx I should have paused before I switch to PPT. If you have any questions, just feel free to raise your hand. Um, so we come back to the here. So here, a penny is a little oil, like the equations of S. You can store the one plus y square dx. And then you can So we start from the F, then we to partial f, partial y. So here I will I will write down here. So because from the Euler Lagrange equation, so partial x, partial y, this this term is f. So partial f, partial y equals zero because f doesn't directly depend on y. So f y y pi x equals square root of one plus y pi x square. So from Euler Lagrange equation, partial f partial y minus d dx partial f partial y pi this equals zero. This as I mentioned the df df over dy equals zero. 
So the second term has to be zero, partial, partial y also equals zero, partial y prime. So this equals zero. So this, this term has to be constant. Yes. So partial f partial y prime has to be constant. So because of the seconds, I can switch to PPT. Okay, here, partial f, partial y equals zero, zero from the oil Lagrange equation, which means the second term also equals zero, zero which means partial f, partial y prime is a constant. So if it is a constant, so which means y y pi over one plus y pi squared equals c pi. Do you know how we get there? So we, so this, actually, if, actually this is pair. So actually, actually y pi is the, is constant, so we do derivative to y pi. Then we finally we get y prime square equals c times one plus y prime square. So y prime equals c plus one minus c. We can give what we can give this term. So y prime. We can give this term another constant m. So which means y prime equals m. Then how do we get a y? So now y x equals m x plus b. So now look at what we proved. The shortest path is a what? Yes, exact. So the show you what? What did you say, sorry? Yeah. Well, we need to use math to prove it. What do you, or you can also you can use experiment. I also need to use. State nine is the shortest path. Yeah, that's a good point. So later, we will use this formula to prove some other problems. So, okay, let's just give up. Let me see this part. So before I get to the last uh, second uh, application of Euler Lagrange equation, I just give a quick review. So look at the two examples, then we derived it. So you have the Euler Lagrange equation. For this part, uh, we only the first step. This is the first step. We just your derivative as well as the whole y prime. This is first step, and then we get to the second step. So we did, yeah. So it's just the basically just two steps. And now we uh, talk about the first uh, application use the euler lagrange equation to prove the shortest distance. The shortest line between two points is a straight line. So the next, we will look at the, so the second application we will look at the branches to cone curve. So the problem is about so here is the x axis, this is the y axis. So from the point of one, x one, x two, to point two, x two, y two. This is point two, this is point one. 
Okay, if you have any questions, just feel free to raise your hand or if you want me to stop to wait for you. Okay, I see this is also the same. So here is a question. So the Francesco Chrome problem is to let you find the shape of a track on which a roller coaster released from point one was reached to point two in the minimal possible time. So that's a problem we are going to solve. And I want to ask if you start from the which pass will use the minimal time, which pass will be quickest? Why? Let's see what you said. It's thanks for your answer. Exactly. So, so before, <laughs> so next time I'll talk a song, I'll tell you how to do it. But first, as, as you said, the basic story is you pass. You will release the uh, velocity, will be the largest velocity, but the number pass, and it will be released this way. It might be the shortest distance, but the velocity will be the maximum. So it's a complete resistance pass this way. But then the next time, the person will give you a perfect uh, answer how to do that with this Euler Lagrange equation. So here, I just uh, give you. Yes, yeah, so later, uh, I think uh, next time, the uh, person will give you to here. Yeah. Yeah, so it's a basic. So the center of your, 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 with the library store and the tree to derive the equation, we should do the applications. Um, if you didn't like uh, catch up the paste these one notes, I can, uh, this is my contact. I can also upload my PPT and also my notes on my website. Uh, or you can just email me and about, uh, about today's lecture. So here I will also show a, a video about Lagrange equation. So at the same time, if you have any questions, also feel free to come to individually to ask me. Yeah, the video is a future long in classical if you, Newtonian you physics. Like 20 minutes, the Lagrangian of a system is the total kinetic energy I can also minus the share total the link. potential you can also energy. Watch later by yourself. In quantum field theory, so the this simple really relationship is no longer true, and the equation for the Lagrangian at each point in time no, is a 